Coffee, of course, you mentioned was one of, is probably one of the better known and most widely used fair trade items. Mm -hmm. And but I understand that over time, and interestingly enough, despite the recessionary times where many companies are struggling, of course, many many individuals, families, and companies are struggling. Um, the fair trade market has actually done pretty well, and part of that is fueled by. Um, your ability to bring new categories of products online, right? Mm -hmm. So let's yeah. take a look at the products. Yeah, I mean, we've really found that even through the recession, people still care about you know helping the world, and there's kind of been an increase in awareness of, of just ways that they can reduce poverty through fair trade. Mm -hmm. um, so one of the newest products we have um, is this handsome polo shirt. This is from Tompkins Point Apparel. And, they are the second company in the U.S. to bring um, fair trade apparel. Mm -hmm. So, the and you meaning said it was organic. Also, is that right? It's also the organic. Yeah. So, fair trade apparel not only you know has the farm standards for the cotton, but it also has standards for the factory um, for the workers. And mm -hmm. so, you know, when there's been a lot of um, you know, news and, and talk about sweatshops and how people don't want to buy products made in sweatshops, but this is a way for you to know that when you buy a product that the workers that made it were treated fairly um, and that their wages were increased mm -hmm. um, through the fair trade standards. So was that, would that be two separate cooperatives in that um, that uh, Transfair was working with on the labeling, in, you know, one is on the supply side, mm -hmm. right? The cotton manufacturer, the, I mean, the cotton grower, uh, yeah. the supplier of the cotton, the raw materials, and then the actual apparel manufacturer and the um, that manufacturing. Uh, that's two completely different. Yeah, it's yeah. two ends of the supply chain, and, yeah. and we're really excited about this because we're able to help even more people um, and just benefit really the people that you know make the clothes that we wear every day and just take for granted. We're talking about the cotton and we're talking about the manufacturing. So then what about the work and the relationships on the retail side, which would be here in the United States or you know elsewhere in Europe and in industrialized mm -hmm. countries? Does the labeling initiative, does that also include trying to target certain retailers and getting finding new areas to distribute in, finding new distribution channels? Yeah, I mean a lot of retailers have you know these sustainability initiatives and um, sourcing and buying fair trade products is one way for them to meet their sustainability goals. Um, uh -huh. So, you know, we're working with retailers who are really um, committed to sustainability and want to make sure that the products that they sell were produced in a way that's um, sustainable. What, um, what are some of the brands and stores that people here in Portland, Oregon should be looking at and then also nationally? Um, so any really local retailer, natural groceries um, and all the way to you know mass market retailers are going to carry some fair trade products and it's really up to the consumer to ask for it if you don't see a certain product that you really like um, ask for yeah, it yeah to go um, talk to the manager or the yeah, buyer and because you know it's really the the retailers want to know that american consumers care um, mm -hmm. otherwise they just assume that we'll buy anything so well it's and plus really our european counterparts that's how the whole uh, initiative mm -hmm. got started yeah so it's really you know we depend on americans to demand it, you mm -hmm. know, request it. If you if you don't see a fair trade chocolate bar, go ask for it. I'm sure they'd love to order it for you. So chocolate, you're talking about one of my favorite products. <laughs> so, uh, but we do in the studio have a fair trade chocolate bar. So where would a person look or what, you know, again, let's show that logo or where it would look in terms of the packaging and so forth. Yeah, so this is um, an Alter Eco dark quinoa chocolate bar, which mm. is awesome. Quinoa it has um, the most protein of any grain and it's really um, a superfood. Mm -hmm. It's starting so, to dis displace but, um, potatoes or rice or yeah, pasta on a dinner plate, it's right? It's great. If you haven't tried it yet, we also have um, fair trade quinoa. Mm. Um, makes a great side dish. But this chocolate bar combines really the best of both worlds. Fair trade chocolate, fair trade quinoa. Um, antioxidants. Antioxidants, <laughs> yeah, this is great. Um, so make sure when you're buying chocolate that you look at all the bars and look for the label um, because otherwise you have no idea you know, where the chocolate was made, how much was paid for it, um, and how the workers were treated during the production. 
So basically for chocolate, we're just going to tell people don't look on the back, don't look at the don't look at the calories, <laughs> the fat grabs, just you know, look for the fair yeah, trade label. Yeah, don't worry about that. When you see the label, you know immediately that you can trust that that product um, was made in a way that's good for everyone. Yeah, okay. And how long is this, um, this label or this particular version of the label sure. been around? Is it um, this one's been around since 1998 uh -huh. um, when we started with coffee and it continues to, to become more and more prevalent as we introduce new products um, along the way. We now certify more than 80 product categories mm -hmm. um, and there's actually more than 100 that, that could be certified. They just we just need to find the brands to do it. Yeah, um, so and, and it's from what, like 58 countries, is that right? Uh-huh, okay. 58 countries. So we're helping literally millions of farmers and their families um, lift themselves out of poverty through the products that they've grown. It's not, you know, a charity, it's, it's really using the trade system to benefit the farmers. Yeah, I mean, so it's, consu it's consumer information. It's saying that this product that you're buying, because a lot of what we've discussed that goes into any type of, getting any type of product to market, mm -hmm. whether it's fair, fair trade or not, is really hidden from the consumer. And often consumers um, you know, are compelled by economics and they're making the decision at point of sale and they're there at the shelf and they're trying yeah. to say, um, what should I buy? But certainly consumers are becoming more savvy and more, um, ethically based, right, in terms of their, in their purchases and maybe looking at something and saying, oh, you know, I recognize this. Yeah, I mean, I think consumers <coughs> really want to help um, in third world countries. They don't want to buy products that are, you know, traded in an unfair way. They just don't know how. Or they don't know, so, so uh, information right. and just, I mean, your job in, in terms of being <laughs> public relations and getting the word out is, mm -hmm. is really important and shows like Sustainable Today trying to yes. help inform people about um, ways to make the planet a better place. So um, I want to hear, I want you to tell our guests about Rwanda. I know that when we talked on the phone you um, said you had the opportunity to, to go to Rwanda recently and it's this great success story, not only in terms of the um, you know, a fair trade success story, but it touches on a lot of other issues as well, like women and empowerment mm -hmm. and microloans and all of that. So I'll yeah. let you tell our, <laughs> our viewers about that. Um, so I traveled to Rwanda really on vacation, um, but made it a point to, to stop by a fair trade cooperative so that I could really see fair trade in action. Mm -hmm. um, what I saw was completely unexpected. You know, when, as soon as I got there, I was getting hugs and tears and just pure joy and, and gratitude um, for the work that Fairtrade is doing for, for this cooperative. Um, the particular cooperative I visited was a women's cooperative. Um, Rwanda is still really recovering from the genocide and so um, a lot of these women are widows um, or maybe even orphans, um, very young women that are, have taken over the, the family farming business. Mm -hmm. um, and as it turns out, in the U.S., a lot of companies are looking for coffee produced by women. I think, you know, women in the U.S. want to help other women, and so this kind of gives them an opportunity to do that, um, to know that they're buying from a woman and they're buying it a product that was traded in a fair way. Tell it was <laughs> really quite a moving experience it for was, you. Yeah, yeah it, it and even great. for somebody who's knowledgeable and is working in fair trade, yeah. that was still came as quite a, a surprise. Yeah, you just the have genuine no appreciation. idea um, how much, you know, just a little bit more for their coffee is really helping them. Um, you know, now they can send one of their kids to school where before they couldn't no. afford to send any of them. Um, and we'd like to get to the point where they're sending all of their kids to school. And to do that, we really need Americans to to keep buying fair trade. So what are some other things that people can do either, um, you know, not only during fair trade month, but all throughout the year to become more engaged or aware or, um, make a difference. Sure. Um, it, well, we have a new movement called Fair Trade Towns USA, and that's the website, fairtradetownsusa.org, okay. where you can work to make your town a fair trade town, which means that um, the retailers in your town are selling fair trade products, the businesses are embracing fair trade, you know, serving fair trade coffee and chocolate and tea. Um, oh, and, that, hungry. and then the city passes a resolution in support of fair trade. So right now there are 19 fair trade towns in the U.S. and there's campaigns that are being started every day. So if you go to that website, you can look and see if a campaign has been started in your town and how to get involved. 
Okay, so it sounds like something maybe Portland can look into. Definitely. Well, that wraps it up, and unfortunately, we're at the close of the show. This has been a wonderful um, discussion and conversation with you, Katie, from you. Uh, on fair trade, and a lot to, um, to think about. And I guess we can sip our coffee or tea and snack on chocolate while we're thinking about fair trade. <laughs> so thank you so much for coming and being our guest, Katie Barrell, the public relations manager from Transfair USA. And thank you for coming up from California too. That, I mean, that was really generous of you. And thanks. So, excuse to be in Portland. Yeah, <laughs> that's great. So, and, and for those of you viewing at home, thank you for being our guest today as well on Sustainable Today. We can be, you can catch us on the second Saturday of each month on Comcast Channel 11, Verizon Channel 22, or if you prefer online viewing, you can watch us at www.sustainabletoday.org where we're bringing you the tools to be sustainable today. Mm -hmm.